Lucky. Wait, tell me about this place. Um, I don't want to reveal too much information. You gotta tell me something, or um, yeah, it's just a private facility. Me and some some guys got. I'm just in the bowl corner. That was my main piece. We're not supposed to be filming in here? I don't think we're supposed to be filming in here. But whatever, it's... I pay rent, so... Yeah, I might get yelled at for this, but... Whatever. My life. <laughs> What's up? Welcome back to Epically Later. This episode's about Dylan Reader, who's... Hands down, one of the best pros out right now. Uh, he just came out with part on Gravis. Just him is the whole video and it's amazing. I guess the only reason he made it was because he wasn't really that satisfied with the Alien Workshop part, which came out a year ago. I don't know. Dylan's amazing. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, I grew up in Westminster, a little north of Huntington Beach. Kind of like Korean, Mexican town. A lot of pool halls, a lot of faux. I don't think anybody's really from Westminster that I know of who skates. So just Huntington Beach. Dale's from Huntington Beach. I think yeah. Te Templeton's from Huntington. Like, you ever been to that Murdy Park down there? That's like a little ashtray park. I think Templeton designed it. Yeah, the, the famous one. No, I think Huntington Park's the famous one, the one by the high school. Then there was another one before that that was smaller. It was there before Huntington Park. But we used to go there because we were too intimidated to go to Huntington Park because that's where, like, you know, Andrew went and like all those Warner Avenue crew dudes like at the time because I was like like 11 maybe 10. But I remember seeing like Andrew at Huntington Park for the first time. I was pretty starstruck. I saw Penny there a couple times when I was little. All the old Penny footage there is awesome. Dude, he rips that place. It's not there anymore. They took it out, demolished it, they extended the football fucking field. It's just stupid. So how old are you now? 21. Dang, that seems like you'd be, <coughs> yeah, really young when that was going on. Yeah, no, super young. Such a little shithead. I first met Dylan. I was doing a photo shoot for Quicksilver for their youth campaign. I would shoot whoever they would bring. They'd bring models or whatever. And then at that point, Dylan actually had come in, like they picked him as a little boy model. And he had come in like that. And they're like, oh, we brought a little skater guy. And I was super anti. I was like, you know totally get away from me. We shot some photos and then they needed action photos. So then I sent him to go shoot some stuff with Ortiz. Cause I was like, I ain't even going to waste my fucking time. I talked to Ortiz later and I was like, Hey, how'd that go? And Ortiz was like, dude, he, he's pretty gnarly. And I'm like, what do you mean? You know, what he, was he pretty gnarly? He's like, Oh, he actually like Smith grind this rail and he kick flipped down this, these stairs. And I was just like, what? Get the fuck out of here. Whatever. So then Dam Am comes around. He basically is like, you know, can I come enter the Dam Am? Can I enter under Quicksilver? And I'm like, yeah, go for it, whatever. It's totally cool. And then next thing you know, he won the contest. And I was just like, what the fuck? From that point on, he basically went on pretty much almost every single trip that I did for Quicksilver. These are, these are the fucked up ones. Like this, this was the first the Miami trip. That was his first trip with us. That was with Janoski and, and um, Donnie Barley and Reese. But like that was... He's got braces? <laughs> yeah, he's got braces. He was such a little like, whoa guy. <laughs> it's like the old, the old team right there. I mean, that's something I even like, I skate with him all the time and I forget like, like when he was like 12, he's going on trips with like, you know, the Quicksilver guys like Reese, Stefan. And he was just like the little kid with men, you know? And then also with Osiris, I think he went on like a bunch of trips with Jerry and all those guys. So he's got like a pretty like deep, he's got like some pretty deep roots. Like I'll, once in a while I'll see these old photos and be like, oh yeah, you were like one of those little kids. Like 
misled youth or whatever was his favorite video and like he had like super skin tight pants he's like 13 years old he's like one of those kids like yeah. lip sliding 15 stair handrails or something you know going out with his buddies at night like lighting stuff up like a bunch of like 15 year old kids like trying to skate like the most gigantic handrail and killing themselves you know Jerry has a portrait of him somewhere and it's just like this portrait of this baby. It's like Dylan, it's like this baby face. I first met Dylan when I wrote for Osiris and I think Chris Pastris was our team manager at the time and I don't know where he found him. I think he went to like a contest or something and just found this kid and just brought him on some trips. That's how I first met him. I had never heard of him or seen photos of him or anything like that. But I just trusted Chris because he had good taste. So me and Louie like, you know, on tour we would kind of try to take care of him and make sure you know he didn't get into too much trouble or anything and he was so young he was really quiet like he never said anything he was just this really like quiet kid with like braces it's funny like he was really shy like girls always wanted to talk to him and like like hug him and stuff he was just like this adorable little kid and like he was just so shy and like you know he didn't really and it was all I think it was all really new to him you know just being sponsored and traveling you know you could tell he was a mature kid he wasn't like just some like spaz like normally kids at that age you can tell that you know they don't really know how to skate yet I mean maybe they could do hard tricks but they can't really skate but Dylan could like skate everything and like skate really well like we liked him a lot right away like we really liked his skating well, on? Cyrus came out with that subject to change video. I shared a part with uh, the butcher. I, mean, I was excited. It was like first video that I was filming for, you know. I was like 15, 14. When I was that age, I, all I really did was like skate rails and stuff. He kind of got labeled as like a little rail kid because that's all he was really skating was rails. Once again, seeing a little kid in the beginning, he thinks one way and then he gets influenced by someone else. He really got influenced with Tony T and those guys. And Tony was, I think, a big influence with him and so was Donnie Barley. And those guys, what kind of set them apart was their being able to skate tranny. It really hit him and I think the way he looked at skating bowls and skating tranny. And then, like, I actually made him enter the first contest and he did pretty bad. And then he went back the second year and he actually got 13th place, which was pretty gnarly for Marseille. This was actually that one he rode in uh, Marseille. That was the one when he got 13th place. Like, that was pretty gnarly. Stoked on that. That was the AM contest? Or no, it was pro. It was pro. That was when he did, and that was before anyone, I, I mean, I saw doing him was the no complied tailside reverts. He did that in there in that in in one of his runs and then he did like there was a wall a vert wall and he did like like kickflip frontside wall rides and kickflip backside wall rides but like super high and popping and he was skating more like doing more technical and flip stuff it was good i think it was just good for him to like break out of the little rail kid rail kid deal so after like all the osiris stuff like i i would just kind of see him around i didn't see him for years and then he he just grew up I guess I felt kind of like proud. I mean, I didn't, it's not like I played like a, a big part in his life or anything, but it was just cool to see him go from like a, a little kid to just like a, like a full blown, like totally well-respected skater. I first met Dylan in Barcelona. He was just a little kid. He had like massive audios on, birdhouse board, hat backwards, long hair, same long hair. And he must have been like 14 or 15. He didn't talk much back then. <laughs> He's really quiet? Yeah, he was pretty quiet. I was recovering from my first knee injury. I wasn't able to skate, but I was like, you know, just wanted to go out and stuff. It was just me and him. Like, I ended up filming him on some random spot skating. It's like, come on, do something. I'll point the camera at you. You were filming? <laughs> yeah, I was filming him. And I think Anton was, uh, Anton was around, so I just like tried to shoot a couple of photos and stuff. But no, he didn't have, he didn't have like a crazy kid style. It was like, 
or maybe it was right at that time that he kind of he like started developing it. like it was early early stages of his style like no he was he was already he was already good back then he was actually on before me i think basically it was like once he he started coming on all the quick trips he kind of just started coming into his own and and then at that time reese was a pretty big influence on him and then reese started rasa libre and basically they're just like come to rasa libre and it was on Reese, Reese asked me to ride for him, Reese Forbes, because he started it with Matt. He asked me to ride for him, I was like, yeah, fuck it, let's do it. It seemed like it had really good art direction. Though. Yeah. The graphics were sick, man. They had awesome graphics. I think it was all like Michael Leone and stuff, but like, I don't know if you ever saw the board, it was like the, like the wine bottles and like the flowers and stuff. And then there was, I don't know, this one with like, the snake stuff on like the back of like the, uh, just like blank wood and I don't know there's a bunch of cool ones. I think a lot of people were paying attention to Russell Libre because it was such an awesome company and I think that helped me out. I had seen the kid around skating and like knew that there was something special about him. No one had seen anything of Dylan either. All he had was uh, this Quicksilver promo thing. I think the Transworld part like really set him from being like a little kid to like being a, like a good amateur. That was kind of him coming into his own, like kind of like showcasing his style of skating. Was that Transworld video was I think when probably most people learned about him. I feel like he was on the work, like he was working on that, riding, Ross De Libre, riding for Ross Libre, and then Ross Libre fell apart, I feel like, in the middle of that video, and he finished it out riding workshop boards. I want to say that he did, or that transition was happening or something. I don't know, dude, I don't even know, honestly. I, I mean, I was like pretty young at the time, I didn't even think about it, I was like, oh, it's going out of business and whatever, cool. You know, at that time when the Rasa Libre thing was going out, he had numerous phone calls, you know, from, from other sponsors that wanted to hook him up. Like it was, out of all the thing when the Rasa Libre thing went, he was like, you know, there was Omar, there was Reese, there was all those guys I was dealing with, <clears throat> but Dylan was by far the most that everyone was wanting. You know, everyone was calling and going, all right, what's up with Dylan? People were saying that like, he kind of wanted to maybe ride for like, Anti-hero, but he wasn't sure he because it's through deluxe too. Like he'd kind of been talking to those guys, maybe. Yeah, it, it wasn't. You know, obviously, I think he had to get voted on to both both companies. I don't think he was voted on completely with Anti-hero. I knew he definitely looked up to those dudes. They asked me to ride for Anti-hero, which I was super psyched on. And I talked to Jim, and he wanted me to ride for him. And I remember thinking, I was like, fuck, I don't really fit the roster for anti-hero. Like, I'm not, like, a super gnarly pool skater. Because like, at that time, there wasn't any AMs on the team, I don't think. Like, it was just, like, Tony and Stranger and Hewitt and stuff. I went on, like, an anti-hero, like, van strip, kind of. But I didn't really get along with one of the riders. So I told Stranger I was over it. <laughs> you want me to tell me who it was? No, I don't really know. I should, probably shouldn't even brought that up. But I mean, at the same time as well, Ave had asked me to ride for Workshop, so that was that was a big factor in it as well. I don't know. I just felt that Workshop was kind of more my steez, mm -hmm. you know, and like fucking Ave and Dill and Heath were like my favorite skaters. So I was like, fuck, I want to ride for the company with like, all the dudes I look up to. Not too many kids get to say they ride for the, their favorite company with their favorite skaters. He got on right before that Transworld video part came out that he was in. And he just seemed like he really kind of like fit, especially with like where Workshop was at the time. They were kind of like talking about starting to do a video. And at the time, there weren't a lot of young guys, like new AMs on the team. I mean, Greg was the main like, motivation behind that like he was really psyched on on Dylan it was all Greg trying to like because Greg was working on on minefield and at the time he was like what well, the video needs these younger kids and stuff and I agreed with it and everything and it did and so like Greg was the main motivation to make the video better 
we were starting the workshop video. I was living with Greg. It was 2006 or the end of five, I think. And I think like we were kind of like riding out that lull of like when Papalardo had originally quit and stuff. It was a slow start, you know, and like there was no real new blood on the team and we knew we kind of needed that in the video and like just to, as for the workshop in general. And like, I remember talking to Greg and I was like, dude, this kid, and Omar, 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 Omar and Dylan being a package, ideal package, you know? We kind of were talking about both of them at the same time, you know? Like, we need to kind of jump on these kids, you know? We got the new Alien Worship Warhol series boards. Those are pretty cool. Have you seen those? No. They're sick. The bear one's pretty good. He looks like a weirdo. There's that one. Fucking deer deck. Yeah, Artos. Brants. I'm psyched to get mines the fucking the bananas and I feel like that'll be like the hot seller. Dills. I think there's a lot of alien pros. Yeah. I feel like workshop too, is there's not really a you know, a genre. Like everybody's so different, you know, you got like Heath and then like Abe and they're like Deer dick, you know what I mean? And like a broad, like span of dudes, you know? Kalis. Kalis, well, now he's DJ Kalis. I mean, Kalis left, I'm sure he was feeling a bit like of the outcast, you know? Like going on tours, I think it would just be like, you know, Abe, Jake, Dill, Heath, and then like Kalis. I could see where like it seemed like if, if Kalis felt that way, which I, I feel like he did, that he, did, he felt like he didn't fit in. Because there's a you know, Josh has been on since forever. Someone like Josh is more of like a team guy. He likes to have the whole team like get together. Like he's, he's real about that. I felt like he didn't feel like he fit in when he was there before all those guys. Shit, I mean, they all took over. Those, all those new kids and Ave and Dylan, those guys, I mean, they, it just seemed like it was their team kind of. Workshop got divided into upriver and downriver at one point. And now that Kalitz is gone, there's less upriver. Like Deerdick, Mikey Taylor, Barra is so upriver. What does that mean? They're upriver. They're like, you know, they're where the, you know, where TVs exist, the internet, fishing's better. Who's in the van on tour? Who's dirty and in the streets all the time? The downriver kids. So Dylan was like instantly downriver with us. As far as Dylan goes, between the time he got on the workshop and him just being with us all the time and being so much like Ave and I, it seemed like he wasn't ever not there. He just kind of embodies like a, a classic, good style, gnarly, talented skater. And like into just like who he is and stuff, it's just fitting to the workshop, you know? Whatever, he's his own, own person, you know? Dylan's like me and Ave, like hand tattoos, smoking cigarettes. There were so many times me and Ave like looked at him like, ah, oh, look at him, he's growing up so fast. Oh boy, like, you know, and the shit gets new with him. These guys are pretty tight. Burgundy loafers. They're slip ons. Kind of cool. These shoes are pretty infamous. Yeah, I think they got a lot of talk when they came out. <laughs> Definitely got some shit for them, but I fucking dig them. They're awesome, like when you skate them, that like this red comes off, like it's like super thin leather, so it, it like, like bleeds kind of crazy. Well, Dylan was on Vans, and at the time he was wearing the slip-ons, you know, that's all he wore, slip-on, slip-on. So when we started Gravis, you know, that was the thing was like, for him and Arto, it was like, this was gonna be their deal, and they could do whatever they wanted. You know, it was just really like, what do you want? And that's what he wanted because he wanted something that when he's skating looks like when he's walking around at night. So at the time Dylan was super influenced by fashion and just stuff in that world and that's kind of like where it kind of stemmed from was like you know not going like oh how can we rip off the Nike Dunk again or like how can we you know like you look at a lot of shoes and it's sad to say but they they rip off the 
the classics. He wanted to do something different as well. He was willing to take the risk and said like, fuck it, I don't care, because he did get a lot of heat for it. And that's a part of Dylan too, where he's, he is a tough kid where he can go, fuck you, I don't care. And yeah, it's my shoe. Ha. Everybody secretly wants those shoes. Did you hear the story about the Enjoy team? Did the Enjoy team was on a tour of Joe Brooke, he just told me this, and that, and they kept talking about Dylan's shoe. Like, and at first it was like, mmm, mm, 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 who's this? Like, maybe not so bad, but you know, probably something like that. And they were like, man, someone must have said, like, actually, I saw them, and they're fucking so comfortable, and they're super sick. And I just thought, see, that's what it's about. It's about fuck you guys. Fuck me, what I think. Look at this original little fucker running around with his cute little rolled up pants and his fucking shirts with the buttons on and his little necklace and shit. He looks great. That's what's funny. You talk about the way Dylan dresses. Look what we're doing now. Talking about Dylan. So, joke's on you. You're not as good looking as him. You should be able to dress however you want to dress. I mean, look at how Hasoy dressed in the 80s, you know? He was like full rock star. Like, it's all about doing your own thing. But, you know, what it really comes down to is like, you're skating, I think. He's like a full skate rat, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he might wear like sometimes nice clothes, he might skate nice clothes, but dude, he'll like, it's not keeping him from trying something insane and slamming for like five hours till he gets something, you know what I mean? So there's definitely a little bit of negativity towards Dylan, but that's like all people who don't know him. I think that the thing is, I think that the way Dylan dresses in Minefield sticks out so much because when it starts, you have like Dylan Van shoe, kind of, as someone would say, like a normal type of that kid. Then as the video part progresses, all of a sudden, Dylan's got some, some fucking jeans, his little, you know, his little dance shoes on and like a tank top and it's fucking great. It's like, yeah, of course. And now, when you see Dylan, the look is perfectly together. I, I back a look big time. Give a fuck. I'm, I'm, I'm always coming up with looks. I love it. But now I'm stuck in the look. I can't get out of the pull-up socks. The way Dylan dresses is reminds me of Dill at that time when I first met Dill. It was like, here are my fancy, fashionable shoes, and here's like these pants that no one's wearing. And like Dill had those like cut-off pants that were like big and short, they were like high waters. They're, but it was like, a, it was, had something to do with fashion and I think that Dylan's into that. Do you think that Dylan takes that from Dill? I don't think he takes it from Dill. I think that he just expresses himself in the same way that Dill did when he felt like he could be his own person. He's young, when I was that age, I had Richard Avedon CK1 fucking photos on my wall and this is his age to do that kind of stuff. He likes that. He likes fucking model chicks. He'll grow out of that. I'd say if you could look up the words cool breeze online, that's like the perfect explanation for Dylan. He's a cool breeze. Sunglasses and fucking sitting in the corner and not really talking to that many people, especially around that time. He's, he was just a fucking young, mellow dude. And that's how he's always been. And that's part of like his whole like the mystique of Dylan and even like covering up in the hoodies and all the shit is he, he he doesn't like that attention. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't like the whole pretty boy and all this stuff. And it's like, Dylan is a good looking kid. And then because of that, he gets points taken away. You know what I mean? Where if he was fucking ugly, it wouldn't, he would look at, he would be looked at different, but he had to prove himself. You can give Dylan all the shit you want, but he's, he looks great. He's goddamn good looking. I mean, that's obviously, too, the big difference fucking the chicks. You know, it's like, at his video premiere, you're, we had that party, and it's like, you look at all the people in the crowd and all the guys, and then there's just rows of all these good-looking girls, and they're all just staring, watching the whole entire part. And they're like, oh, he's so good at style. He's so smooth, and you're just like, fucking asshole, man. Like, what a dick. <laughs> Dylan can get ass, man. He's, he's confident. He's real confident. He'll... Fuck him and chuck him, dude. He'll 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 do, he'll get some. Him and Alex both have like that. They're both like good looking, like fucking Johnny Depp. Like this one night, I went to this place in out in uh this club out in L.A. and uh, went went and met Dylan, 
And then I look over and like Alex is like Alex is like getting in. He's like, hey, what's up? What's up? I was like, hey, man, what are you doing? But they didn't like really say hi to each other. And I was like, I go, what's going on with that? And they like, I have they have like uh, nightlife beef or something. Like, well, we'll see who gets like the girls tonight. You know, and usually it's Dylan, but yeah, but it's real funny. Well, I mean, Dylan's like so good, you know, like he can pretty much do what he wants when he wants, you know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how like in depth you want me to get. I guess, you know, I could say that like the first year of Dylan was like really incredible. It's like when he got like the year's best ammo or whatever skateboard mag and like every time we go out, he'd get something amazing. And then kind of like the second year, he kind of wasn't really as on it, he was just kind of like, whatever, man, he was just being a kid, you know? He was like partying or whatever, but he wasn't like as focused, I think, as he should have been. We had like an alien house, it was me and Greg, and it was just basically like, to kind of like, you know, get people motivated to go film together and everything, and just, that's when Dylan got on, and he wanted to, cut. he was in Huntington Beach, kind of not doing much, and so Greg was like, let's get him up here, get him in the house, we can go skate all the time and it'll be like good for the video. I'll get him out, it'll maybe motivate you to go skate and stuff like that and like kind of push each other. And it didn't, I guess it didn't really work out that way. Yeah, it was a weird, weird scene. Like I lived in the living room, like all my shit's spread out, fucking like, you know, stay up till four in the morning, sleep all day. Just clothes everywhere, play guitar at fucking three in the morning, like learning how to play guitar, not even like playing, just learning how to play it. And he would sleep till like two, three o'clock in the afternoon in the living room with just like people walking over him and stuff like that. And it's just like, hey, we're going filming in an hour, like get up. And then just like, no, just he just slept. I don't know, having to walk over an 18 year old kid in your living room to go skate and wondering why he's not up, like out there as much as I am, it just was discouraging. And I'd just never seen someone so unmotivated. I definitely uh, kind of faded away for a little bit. Kind of got lost in my own head. Maybe some other things. The alien thing was a, the starting off of a whole <laughs> another side of Dylan. It was when he really started to get addicted to drugs. Like his skating, in my opinion, was like falling. Dylan conked out for a while. He was his own bad news bear. He was fucked up. All the time. He was just doped up. He was so stupid. Like, he was stupid. He, you, like, couldn't talk to him. And, like, I thought I was fucked up. Man, he, he passed me right by. But he never had a drinking problem. I mean, I really was having a hard time with the whole thing. I've been with a kid since he's 11. Like, he's like a son and like a brother, like a friend, all these things to me. And, you know, I'd go on trips with him and he'd be the kid before that was like getting all the tricks, you know, boom, boom. You'd be like, all right, you don't need anything of Dylan, you know, and he'd come on trips and he wouldn't get anything. It, it was literally the, the last year when everyone was expecting like all his fucking gnarliest shit. And yeah, he just, it just, that's when the year that it really all took a hold of him and he just fucking started to just melt. You know, he started having a hard time when he was in public, like skating and stuff, because he constantly was feeling like he was being judged. And I mean, there was a point when he came to me and was like, I want to quit. I don't want to, I can't handle it anymore. It's, it's too much, you know, I, I don't, it was just fuck, it all had kind of hit into him at once. And then, you know, he just, that was his, his outlet was pop some pills. <laughs> what kind of drug, like, they're doing pills? It's up to you, whatever you want to do. No, no, it's all good. I mean, yeah, fucking pharmaceuticals, man. They can't like, fucking solve your problems for the time being. Well, they definitely, uh, you know, drugs will win in the long run. I didn't even know what was going on by the time of the end of the video. I was pretty far gone. 
I didn't really care. I mean, I did, but at the same time, I was like, you know, trying to fucking not think pretty much about anything. He was that talented that he could pull off something like that without being at 100%, you know? But the people that knew his 100%, you know, knew that that video was not even close. And especially towards like the last few months of filming, like the real critical time, he was just kind of like not really there. You know, there's always kind of like an idea of like, hey, you know, it'd be good to get like a couple more lines or like some tranny stuff would be really cool where like, especially if you're someone young like him and you already have a good foundation of a part built, you can kind of like, you can kind of like mold it a little bit, you know? And uh, he just wasn't really super focused at all. So I don't know, it was kind of rough on me because I had really like, high expectations, you know, and I'm not saying this part isn't good, but, you know, I think he's, 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 he'll admit this first, you know, it's like he had high expectations too, and he knew that in a lot of ways, I think he feels like, not that he blew it, but he could have come through a lot better than he did. I feel like his part in the Alien video was good, but like, this is like a kid that's like a real talent at skating, and just, I don't think he lived up to his talent in that video part. There are certain people pouring as much as they could into this video, and then here, there was this young kid that we got to be in the video, to help the video, just piling out. I didn't know this, but at the premiere, he just, after his part, he got up and just left. Just walked out on the video. It's just like, hearing that, just, I mean, there was just numerous things. Like, I don't care if you're fucked up on pills or what. Like, you don't go to your fucking video premiere where everyone in this team worked hard and walk out after your own part. Just don't even show up if you're going to do that. Well, I went to it, it was fucked, like, I don't know, I was so out of it. And I remember there was like no seats. And I just remember it was like a really weird situation in my head. And I guess there was like seats saved for me, but I didn't even, I was so far gone that I didn't even realize. And I remember watching my part and then I just left. And I remember walking down the aisle and seeing Carter and like that's kind of the only thing I really remember like when walking out and I guess he was like super bummed. He's bummed you left? I'm pretty, yeah, he was probably fear, like, pretty pissed off. Did you ever come out and say shit? I'm not really that type of guy, because, like, I just, like, keep it bottled up, bottled up, and just slowly, like, over time, we'll just, like, hate someone. And just, like, be like, all right, well, fuck that guy. Like, I just hate him now, like. And that's kind of, like, the way I went with Dylan. I was just, like, this fucking kid. And just, like, he would annoy the fuck out of me, and, like, I just kind of like bottled it all in and just turned it into like hatred towards him. But supposedly he's that, that all ended and now he's- Well, like, yeah, okay, so like that was like Dylan, like I kind of like, I mean, I was kind of just over the whole Dylan thing, just like whatever, like he's not that motivated to skate and he, you know, did a lot of bullshit, you know, did a lot of bullshit, like walked out on a premiere, like you just don't, you don't act that way. But, you know, and then time went on and later on I found out that he had this gnarly pill problem and everything and kind of got help. I think he got ultimatums from his companies, basically like, listen, like these checks are here. They're not yours until you clean your act up. Like you're done, you're cut off. We were gonna definitely drop him from Gravis and drop him from Analog because it was like, we just can't keep this going. You know, there was always excuses and it was basically like we tried to get him to go to rehab that day and um, and basically he didn't want to go. He wanted to try and do it on his own. And, you know, I didn't think he could do it. Mo didn't think he could do it. But the thing with Dylan was he was always like honest and straight with us. And so he just said, hey, give me six days. And, and if I can't do it in six days, then I'll go to a clinic. So we said, fuck, okay. And no one thought he could do it, but he, uh, he actually did it. Fuck, man, you know. I just got my, like, my priorities have changed since that video, you know, like, I'm just more focused on my skating, pretty much, like, I don't, like, all that shit's in the past that I did, and, you know, I don't even really think about it anymore, like, now it's, it's like a new chapter, kind of, you know, for me. And I think that's why now, over the past year, he's, like, seriously, like, on a mission, like, so I think now he's, like, super on point. I mean, I went on a trip with him last year, and I'm, you know, completely different guy, 180. Was skating, really motivated, just like, wow, like, everyone's going to the bar, Dylan's going out with Greg, with the Jenner and the lights to try to go film tricks. I've seen the tricks that he's done, like, I, on that trip, I saw, like, stuff that he did that was, like, 
really impressive, really impressive stuff. Like, I don't think in the past six months there's been a time we go out, even if it's just a mellow day, it turns into a gnarly day. The kickflip Smith was just something that happened one day. I mean, that's just the, the testament to what's going on with him right now is that like, that's like something he will just wake up and run into. I mean, could you imagine then the shit that he's thinking about doing? What you saw on Minefield's great. <laughs> like, it's super sick. You have no idea. I mean, the kid is just, he's in the window. Me and Abe talk about the window. 19 and 24, you have this window. When you're in the window, you can do anything. Dylan, he's a young, agile skateboarder. I mean, he's in his window for sure. Like, he's fucking killing it right now. Like the last year now that I've seen him skate and go into spots and he's just fucking destroyed it. Just fucking manpower. He's not like this flimsy little guy. He's just like stylish, fucking buffed out and just ready to kill. Yeah, he's, he's working on this clip for for Gravis, and I'd say that's gonna be pretty, pretty goddamn good. Not a single filler in it. This stuff was supposed to be kind of the bangers of the Alien video. He's catching up on the missing year. Yeah, I'm super stoked on what I have so far. I mean, fuck, I've been... It's, it's such a short period of time to do, a, you know, a video parts. I, I mean, I've only, I've been filming with Greg, it's like, I think a year now. I'd like to think that like people's perception of Dylan is going to change, you know, because I think like right now, I think people don't really, I think people, I think he's kind of like a little misperceived maybe, you know what I mean? You know, when this footage comes out, I think, I, I, I think it's going to change a lot of people's minds because it's so good. And he's like, it's not just like he's like technically good, he's fucking gnarly, you know? And we all knew what he was capable of, but now he finally knows. Like, he always ripped, but now he's fucking gnarly. And I don't know if, when this thing comes out if his thing will be out, but anybody who's been talking shit or whatever, this kid's, like, fucking tough as nails, dude. He is such... He's, like, one of the gnarliest skaters alive right now. And, like, it's... People will see. Like, just that, you know? I don't know, I told them to film for another two years and, and make Dylan the movie. <laughs> they made one with Bruce Irons, I thought it was sick. Bruce Irons the movie. Bruce Irons. Pro surfer, Bruce oh. Irons, the Vulcan made it. I think <laughs> they should make fucking Dylan the movie. <laughs>